If God is dead, everything is permitted. That's what scares them. Well, on the contrary, that assumes that human beings have no feeling about what is right and wrong. Uh, as the only reason, is the only reason you are virtuous because that's your ticket to heaven? Is the only reason you don't beat your children to death because you don't want to go to hell? It seems to me that it's insulting to human beings to imply that only a system of rewards and punishments can keep you a decent human being. Isn't it conceivable a person wants to be a decent human being because that way he feels better, because that way the world is better? I would like to think, I don't believe that I'm ever going to heaven or hell. I think that when I die, there will be nothingness. That's what I firmly believe. That does not mean that I have the impulse to go out and rob and steal and rape and everything else because I don't fear punishment. For one thing, I, feel worldly, I fear worldly punishment. And for a second thing, I fear the punishment of my own conscience. I have a conscience. It doesn't depend on religion. And I think it's so with other people too. Besides, even in societies in which religion is very powerful, there's no shortage of crime and sin and misery and terrible things happening despite heaven and hell. I mean, I imagine if you go down death row, a bunch of murderers maybe who are waiting for execution and ask them if they believe in God, they'll tell you yes. Greatest misreception that exists in the public mind about atheism. Oh, there's lots of them. Um, <laughs> That's, I, I would say the greatest misconception about atheism is that we're not nice people. Um, I, I think that a lot of people think that morality comes from religion. Uh, religion teaches that morality comes from religion. And therefore, if you don't have religion, you don't have morality. So I think the greatest misconception of atheism is that we're not nice and or immoral, which, of course, cannot be the case. Uh, it cannot be the case because all the data combats that. Um, the population of people who are non-religious in this country, depending on your polls, goes somewhere between 15 and 30 percent. The population of atheists or non-religious people in federal prisons is 0.07 percent. 0.07 of 1 percent. So the, the amount of people, the amount of atheists who are committing crimes is tiny compared to the amount of atheists out there. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at it from a morality perspective, from an, from an outside perspective, you can see what's happening. People change churches for a reason. They change churches because they don't agree with the church they're in. If they don't agree with the church they're in, so they, they say, okay, well, this, this church isn't doing something, it's not striking my moral fancy. I'm going to go to this church over here because it does. Well, that means morality is independent of religion. And then what they do is they go to this church over here that says, okay, your morality is correct, and God says so. And then they say, ah, God gives me my morality, right? Uh, and that's, that's, it's kind of backwards, but that's how, the, that's how it works. Um, the reality is that every single human picks their own morality. Uh, morality is relative. Um, and everybody picks it. Everybody chooses it. The only difference between an atheist and a theist is that an atheist will internalize it and say, this is my morality. And a theist will say, this is my morality because I get it from my religion. If I could ask you, if there was one thing you wanted people to remember that you could say about science, what would that be? That the universe is knowable and what one need not appeal to mystical, magical forces to account for things. Even if a day arises where something unfolds in front of your eyes that you cannot explain, just because you cannot explain it does not mean it is being driven by mystical, magical forces. It just means it's being driven by laws of physics that we know and you have yet to learn, or that we have all yet to discover. But the universe is knowable, and that's an amazing thing. It's knowable by our feeble human brain that rose up out of the, you know, the, the Serengeti 
the, the plains of Africa to rise up just to survive, to not get eaten, and we build a civilization where we have sufficient free time so that we can contemplate our place in the universe. The second third uh, is a little more pragmatic. Um, religion is our first, that's why I'm so fascinated with it, it's our first version of the truth. It's our first attempt as a species. It's what we tried when we didn't know anything. We didn't know we lived on a spherical planet. We didn't know that our planet revolved around the sun. Uh, we didn't know that there were microorganisms that explained disease. We thought diseases came from curses or witches or uh, ill-wishing or uh, uh, devils or dust devils. We didn't know anything from the childish, terrified, ignorant uh, origins of our animal primate species we come to religion. It's also our first attempt at philosophy, our first attempt at morality, our first attempt at healthcare actually, but because it was our first, it is our worst. We now have better explanations for all these dreads and we have cleared up all of these mysteries, yet we still dwell. Um, and in some countries, in some societies, not just dwell, but live under, under a totalitarian regime that forbids us to think about the progress that has been made or denies us the knowledge that these advances have in fact occurred. So it has become, uh, where once it probably was an aid to our survival, um, a, a really great peril to our continued ability to live as a civilized species. Thus, it seems to me, that in point of its uh, proposing of a totalitarian solution to what is after all a real problem, to its ghastly uh, reliance upon the supernatural rather than the much more miraculous, much more beautiful, much more elegant, much more numinous, much more harmonious natural explanations. Think how much lovelier uh, Einstein and Darwin are. Think how how, how much more uh, elegant and persuasive they are than the idea of the burning bush or the, or, the, or, the, or the demand that without circumcision there can be no redemption. Just, just picture it.